Boom! What's going on everyone? This is Steve Larson. Welcome to another episode of Secret MLM Hacks Radio. Excited as you're here and today I want to address a very big question that people ask, is MLM saturated? If you're like me, you know MLM is an amazing opportunity to grow a real asset for yourself. But you also see that there's huge issues starting to emerge. Like, why haven't big MLMs let tactics change in over 30 years? Or why have they been cutting commissions smaller and smaller? Or even, how dumb is it that old MLM rules say you'll get in trouble when you use the internet to grow your team? These are some of the blaring questions we all face today. This podcast will show you how real MLMers like us are waging war on the old dying methods. And we aren't cheating by only bugging uninterested family and friends. Follow this podcast while I expose the shocking methods I'm using to build my 10,000 person downline and get people begging to join my team daily. Here's to the new tactics without all those old rusty MLM shackles. My name is Steve Larson and welcome to Secret MLM Hacks Radio. What's up my friends? I am actually on a, um, uh, you know I've been doing this a lot in the evenings where I just go ride a bike for 10, 20 miles. Um, I'll go walk quite a bit, and I'm just listening to podcasts. I'm studying. I'm thinking. Sometimes I'm just jamming out to music, uh, but it's kind of uh, it's kind of become some me time, you know. Um, I'm sure it won't always be this time of day, but it's been this for the past little bit, especially while I just did my big Offermind event, which so many of you guys came to, which is awesome. We had about 650 people who had a ticket. About 600 showed, which is a pretty standard, uh, you know, show up rate for an event. And then um, it's awesome. We did uh, did a good chunk of good chunk in sales, and it's been just so much fun to just work with all those new people. I've really, really enjoyed it. Um, and uh, anyway, you know what's interesting is I uh, since then I <laughs> I've needed some decompressed time. I'm speaking at Carnegie Hall um, as the time of me recording this episode. I'm speaking at Carnegie Hall. Martha Stewart is speaking. Um, uh, Michael Gerber is going to be there. Uh, Dan Kennedy's gonna be there so long as his health is okay. He's uh, not doing so well right now. Um, anyway, and it's crazy, man. I, like, I can't think about, <laughs> this is nuts. I, I, anyway, if you guys wanna change your life, right? listen to what I'm doing on this, this, uh, this show, but go publish for one year and you come back to me and you tell me in one year if your financial life is not drastically different. There is something magical about publishing. Anyway, that's not, that's not the purpose of, of today's episode. What I wanna do real fast is I just wanna address the question that comes up frequently and you likely have heard it if you've been in this space more than six months even, okay? Um, I love MLM. I love it. It's so, so, so fun. Um, and one of my favorite things to go do is in, in MLM <laughs> is to look at articles that other people have uh, posted about why they think MLM is not okay. And what you find out is that most people who say these articles are usually those who've been in it but did not figure out how to have success and they feel jaded and they feel negative and they feel, oh, everything's bad for shame, for shame, right? And they go, they go write these terrible reviews and craps, you know, stuff like that. And that's going to happen regardless. Some people will say like, well, that just means MLM is bad. No, no, no. Uh, I've had negative reviews. I've had terrible, like, oh my gosh in anything that I've done. And you likely have as well if you've ever been successful in anything ever, right? There's always naysayers and it doesn't change just because it is or is not MLM, network marketing, direct sales, whatever you, you know, whatever you choose to call it. There'll always be negative Nancy's with poopy pants syndrome and it's just how it happens, okay? Um, I wanna address something though and let you know why I believe it's a gift that people think it's saturated, okay? And it's not because it lowers competition. Um, now, a little while ago, I had a, um, um, I had somebody reach out to me and they say, Steven, I would love to buy Secret MLM Hacks. How much money will you guarantee me that I will make? And I was like, what are you talking about? And I don't know I've told this on the past, but just stick with me for a moment here. Um, uh, it said, how much money do you guarantee I will make with your course? And I said, I don't even know who you are. I'm not gonna guarantee a number. This may not be for you. She said, are you telling me that you don't want to sell it to me? And I was like, yeah, I don't think you're a good fit for it. She was like, are you serious? And I said, yeah, <laughs> I don't care if you have the money. That doesn't mean, you know what I mean? Like my dream customer is not somebody, um, um, let, me, let me just preface it this way. The way, and I've said this in the past on a different episode, but I, I want you to take this from a different angle here uh, while, while I address this. 
um, uh, um, the way that I bring somebody into any product, not just my downline, the way I bring somebody into my product is usually what determines what they do after they bought the product. Meaning if I have to beg somebody into my downline, I usually have to beg them to do something while they're in my downline. So if I don't want that kind of individual, and I'm not judging someone's self-worth, but you all know what I'm talking about, okay? Okay, if I want somebody who is going to be a runner, a builder, right? Somebody who's gonna run around and they're gonna go, they're gonna actually, you know, run far with this thing. I am not trying to convince anybody to get into my downline. I do stuff like what I'm doing right now, all right? And people who hear my voice and see what I'm doing and catch the vision, they find a way into my downline, right? And it's, it's, it's huge, right? Or sometimes people are like, you know what? I just know that that course, I'm just gonna go get it. And I'm not, I'm not trying to pitch you guys here, but you understand why this is such a powerful principle. I don't beg or ask anybody to draw my downline. I've you know that like nasty convincing feeling that you get sometimes? We've all been there, it's okay. Um, where like, you're like, man, I, I, I feel like I kind of pushed them in there. And then they don't do anything? It's exactly what I'm talking about, okay? When people say the market is saturated, the market's so saturated, you guys, that's a gift. It's why I went into MLM. It's why I went into MLM. The fact that I can say MLM and 90% of any room already has an opinion. Oh my gosh, that's huge. I love the show Shark Tank. Um, in the show Shark Tank, uh, one of the episodes of Shark Tank, there is an episode where... Um, they loved this guy. They loved his product. They loved what he was doing. They loved everything about this guy, but they didn't fund him. And the reason why they didn't fund him was one of the most powerful lessons I've ever heard in my life. I cannot remember the guy's name. I'm so sorry right now, but he's one of the guys that sits on the far right. He always sits on the far right on the show. They said, they, all the sharks absolutely freaking loved this guy. They loved him. They loved the product. They wanted it. They wanted everything they're doing, but the reason why they did not fund him the guy on the far right, I keep forgetting his name, I'm so sorry. But what he said was, we want your product, but it would take us millions of dollars to educate the market enough to want to buy that product. Let me say that again. We want your product, but it would take millions of dollars to educate, to educate, to educate the market enough to want to buy that. That's the only reason they didn't fund him. They saw that the market, that the people around, they, all the education would be placed squarely on their shoulders. And because usually education takes time and money for a market, they said no. You guys, the fact that I can walk into a room and say MLM and 90% of everyone already knows that what the heck I'm talking about is a gift. It is a gift. When someone sits back and they say like, oh, well, the market's really saturated. That just means the market's been validated. That doesn't mean that you shouldn't go into it. When I'm looking to see what to sell, I look for the, the most competitive, the most cutthroat, the most bloody red, red, red market, red ocean places that I can. I want that, okay? This is literally one of my strategies. I know it is one of the reasons my stuff has done so well. I just crossed um, in the last year and a half leaving my job. Um, we are, hold on, sorry. We're almost, we're about to cross $4 million, okay? And I will tell you that the strategy I'm dropping on you right here, right now, is one of the major reasons why stuff has blown up so much. It's blown up so much because I have actively, on purpose, pursued bloody, red, highly competitive markets, okay? Now, I'm telling you this, and this is too deep of a concept to go into, and if you guys came to OfferMind, you guys know what I'm talking about here. But the reason, again, why I want that is because the, the, the customer has been educated already to a certain point. I don't need to be the one educating them. There's a huge market out there, billions, right? So much money is running around the, the MLM space. And constantly that market is finding new customers, people who are never planning on being a customer. Oh, what? And that market, MLM as a whole, they are the ones who are, are educating my dream customer for me. 
All I do is I wait patiently for that person to get frustrated with what they've been taught. Hey, you wanna have success in MLM? Go talk to all your friends and family. And I just wait. I wait for that person to get frustrated enough to finally when they see my message and they see my Facebook ads and they see this YouTube video and they see the podcast or whatever it might be, they look at it and they go, you know what? I'm kind of tired. I didn't realize that there was another way to do this. Boom. I don't need to tell them that the other way is painful because they're experiencing pain. It's one of the greatest hacks to the game ever. Any product, I look for this. Okay, any product. It's actually one of the first things I do with any corporate clients because I do have them. Okay, and uh, you know I don't just serve the MLM space. I go. I've done a lot of stuff with a lot of big people now, and it's great. And that's one of the first things I help them figure out. That's called market positioning. Okay, that's marketing. Okay, that's marketing. To go and see how I'm going to position myself in relation to a market. All I do, my friends, is I wait for people to get frustrated in the MLM space. And I'm over here on this side just speaking as loud as I can. I'm just shouting my message into that space. Hey, hey, when you're tired of that method of trying to grow a team, I'm over here. I'm not convincing, I'm just, right? I'm not convincing, I'm not pushing. I'm not trying to say, like, you gotta come do this. And this is one of the, again, one of the fastest ways to uh, grow. Because I'm not the one educating them. An entire market is saying largely the exact same thing. And there's billions and probably trillions of dollars, you know what I'm saying? Like there's so much money inside there. And they're the ones who are educating my future dream customer. Okay, so when somebody says, oh, the MLM space is really, really saturated, it's really convoluted, there's all this, good, okay, good. You know why I go and I sell the ClickFunnels space also? How much money and manpower is being spent on educating funnel builders inside of ClickFunnels? They have over 400 employees, 400 employees, okay? They spend millions of dollars in overhead every month, 400 employees, right? And then someone comes in and says, I'm gonna compete with that. It's like, good luck, Chuck. You gotta, you look at the firepower you're dealing with. That's ridiculous. So. All I do is, um, um, with the ClickFunnels space, is I complement the ClickFunnels space, right? And when somebody comes into ClickFunnels, I'm like, hey, if you want, still use ClickFunnels, because you should use ClickFunnels and it's dumb to not, okay? If you guys want a free trial, by the way, go to freecftrial.com and uh, it'll give you a free trial of ClickFunnels, uh, freecftrial.com. But what I do with ClickFunnels is I, is I wait patiently for the person to just say, you know what? I just wish somebody would just go build it for me. And I'm like, gotcha. Cause right, you should, you should still use ClickFunnels. You should still build a funnel. But when you're like, you know what? I don't want to be a nerd like Steven. Don't let me be the nerd, right? So with ClickFunnels, I complement that market. But in MLM, I compete with that market. I'm throwing rocks into that market. I don't do that with ClickFunnels. I'm not throwing rocks at ClickFunnels. That's dumb. I love ClickFunnels. I bleed ClickFunnels, okay? that's. You see what I'm saying? So my market positioning matters. And so when I hear somebody say something like, hey, the MLM space is super, it's super saturated. Man, that is market validation. That actually represents security, but you're not taught that. And I wasn't taught that in school. I was taught that that's bad. I was taught that when there was competition, I should run the other way. And I was taught when there's competition, I should sit back and that's a terrible thing. No, no. It takes a lifetime of dedication to build the momentum, right? That's required to go build a market. I can either spend my entire lifetime going and developing a new market or go see where the noise already is, okay? And as a marketer, multi-level marketer, network marketer, right? As a marketer, what I'm looking for, and what you have to understand is that a marketer does not create um, uh, attention, right? They just align with where attention already is. And so it's one of the easiest things you can go do is to realize it is a benefit to have such massive saturation. It is a benefit. And then all I gotta do is I gotta figure out, well, how am I gonna position myself in relation to that market? I know that I'm saying a lot here with this and I can feel as it's coming out, I'm not saying enough story, 
But that episode right here, what I'm saying to you right now is one of the reasons why my stuff is blowing up so much. I know it is, I know it is, okay? I look for places where there's a lot of noise, lots of pressure, I don't need to create that, it's already there. And then I look to see where there's a lot of money moving, right? If there's a bigger pot, I don't need to be as skilled in order to take out some, some uh, significant amount of cash. If it's a small pot, there's not as much money moving around inside of a market, I need to be really talented to pull that money out. Okay? So with MLM, one of the reasons it works so well for me, I know, I know, again, one of the reasons it works so well is because I have purposefully targeted um, the MLM space knowing that it's saturated understanding that they're being told certain messages. And then I just wait patiently with my messages. Okay, so Stephen, how does this work for MLM as a whole? I am here with my downline, I'm here with my product. Okay, when people, I remember one of the biggest fears I had is that like, oh, I can't go talk to that person because they've already been pitched and they said no. What, just, <laughs> anyway, you, you, you take it in the context of what I'm talking about right now and it's like, that doesn't make any sense. Okay, um, or uh, Stephen, you know what? They've already bought um, a similar supplement product over here from this person. How many books have you ever bought on business? My guess is that it's more than one. That is a false belief, okay? It's a false belief to sit back and say, I can't because they have already purchased. Good, I want my customer, they, I should not be the first person they've ever bought from. I should not. Um, I should, you know, I should not. Uh, that makes a terrible customer usually. Um, I don't want them to cut their teeth on me. Um, anyway, I, I'm going kind of deep on this episode. I'm probably going too deep with it. And I just want you to know like the reasoning behind this thing is just to fight and help people realize like, man, there is literally decades of previous people who've built all this pressure and all this noise and all this education around society for us. And it is a stepping stone, right? It's a stepping stone, not a low ceiling. It's a stepping stone. So sit back and realize like, oh man, like this is good. I don't need to tell. The first time uh, in the, probably the last six years, um, uh, this, it was, uh, this last week, it's probably the first time in the last six years I've heard somebody say, what's MLM? And I was like, are you serious? And I said, multi-level marketing. And then she was like, oh, no, no, no. Okay, yeah, no, no, I know what that is. And I was like, okay. <laughs> But that's, that's the point, is I don't have to educate people on what it is. Now all I have to do is educate them on why my stuff's cool and that they should buy it and tell my sales message. And uh, it's actually a, um, uh, it's a gift. All right, guys, hopefully it's helpful to you guys. And um, I uh, love our area, I love what we do here. And it's been super fun to go see all the stuff that you guys have been doing here. I can't believe the success stories you guys have had. The listeners on this show are so awesome. Think about the education that's on this show compared to everything else. Oh my gosh, I heard, I have heard some crazy stories about your team volumes just exploding. I don't care what MLM you're in. I want to go change the industry because it is old tactics, which is a gift. All right, guys, I'll see you later. If you guys liked it, uh, please uh, go leave a review for me. I would love that on, uh, on iTunes, on a podcast. That'd be awesome. Um, whether, whatever you thought. Um, I don't care if it's good or bad. Uh, just feedback in general would be helpful. Uh, and then if you are interested in getting Secret MLM Hacks, um, go to secretmlmhacks.com, and it's a program that uh, walks you through these methods. And uh, it's not fictitious theory stuff. There are specific outputs that that course helps you walk through so that by the end of it, You've got lead machines, right? You've got lead funnels. You've got things that are there um, creating consistent leads all the time. We're about to cross, me personally, okay? Not my whole downline, just me personally. I'm about to cross my 2,000th person asking me to join my downline, which is crazy, okay? And it's all automated, all right? It's been that way for the last, uh, like, over two years, which is, and I'm losing track of time. A long time. Okay, 2,000 people. It's awesome. All right, guys. If you guys want that, go to secretmlmax.com. And uh, it's great having you on the show. Thanks so much. Bye. Hey, thanks for listening. Please remember to rate and subscribe. Hey, I know it's tough to find people to pitch after your warm market dries up, right? That moment when you finally run out of family and friends to pitch. I don't see many uplines teaching legitimate lead strategies today, though. You see, after years of, of, of being a lead funnel builder online, I got sick of the garbage strategies most MLMs have been teaching their recruits for decades. So whether you simply want more leads to pitch or an automated MLM funnel, 
head over to secretmlmhacks.com to join the next free training. There you're gonna learn the hidden revenue model that only the top MLMers have been using to get paid regardless if you join them. You're also gonna learn the three-step system I use to auto-recruit my downline of big producers without friends or family even knowing that I'm in MLM. If you wanna do the same for yourself, head over to secretmlmhacks.com now. Again, that's secretmlmhacks.com.